has responded. Of course I did. They were in the shoebox I took to the post office last week. Unless... Unless what? Unless I sent my best pair of heels overnight mail. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. You're telling me now I don't have shoes for the party. <laughs> Girls, I... Oh. It's just that that was the first time that had ever happened in 18 years of married life. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> you mean to say that every night without... <laughs> it was just a little joke, Al. Yeah? I laugh at all yours. No, I'm serious. I'm seasick. You mean it? We're still docked. I can't sail around the world. I guess there's no adventure in me. I'm sorry, Rose. Well, don't be sorry. I... Look what you were about to do. There's a point, Blanche. It was back in 1955, and we had just moved into our first house right next door to Pigpen Johansson. <laughs> that wasn't his real name. That was a nickname, Pigpen. No, Johansson. <laughs> anyway, she knows how long it took us to save that money. You can trust her. Don't get mad. <laughs> Ma, did you buy the CD today? Not exactly. I said, don't get mad. <laughs> Sophia, what did you do with our money? I think you're going to be really impressed. I made a very shrewd deal with a guy I met at the bus stop. Oh. <laughs> you know, your grandma feels real bad about everything. <laughs> what do you say we forgive her? <laughs> <sighs> you know, you... You remind me so much of your mother. <laughs> Just tell me why. Why in this house? Why in my bed again? Dorothy, this place has memories for us. This is the place where Gloria and I first... Well, I don't have to tell you. You were there. <laughs> Dorothy, it just happened. I know you think it's wrong, but it's not a crime, you know. Yet... Look, Dorothy, you don't have to believe all of this, but stop trying to take it away from me. Well, I'm going to bed. Good night, Spumoni face. What did you call me? Spumoni face. Wow, I mean, I, I haven't heard that since I was seven years old. Hi, how was dinner? Great. I ate a lot, Ma drank a lot, Gloria paid a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad the three of you got things worked out. And that Sophia's not leaving. Oh, me too. That spunky little lady sure does add life to this place. Oh, and the story she tells. And there's always a little gem of wisdom hidden. Dean, watch, but there's nothing we can do. It's her daughter. It's her choice. It's like something that happened back in St. Olaf. Oh, Rose, stop. <laughs> Rose, why is it when any one of us makes an observation, the first thing we hear from you is back in St. Olaf? Did it ever occur to you that we might be sick and tired of hearing back in St. Olaf, back in St. Olaf, back in St. Olaf? I don't know how to thank you. Enrique Moss said my report was accurate and concise and very professional. Oh, it's so exciting. Tomorrow I start comparing artificial sweeteners. And next week I get to test crash helmets. You will leave us out of that. Not necessarily true, Daddy Lindstrom. For Rose, you see, one of your wedding guests is none other than famed psychic Gene Dixon. Hello, Miss Dixon. Please call me Jean. I know you want to. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Well, don't you care that they're fighting? Of course I do. You think I have no feelings? Let me tell you a story. Picture this. A crowded Mediterranean port. Teeming with your tired, your poor, your hungry. You know, your huddled masses yearning to be free. We boarded the ship. Attention, new game. Oh. oh, this is a St. Olaf favorite. Everybody puts on a blindfold, and then they choose a partner, and then they think of a number, and the other person thinks of an object, and then the bride tags someone, and they call out their number, and then they switch with her. And... <laughs> Evening, Sam. Evening, fellow Rockahatchee. <laughs> Evening, Sheriff. Evening, Bev. What you doing here? The usual, just drifting. I just cannot believe you would stab me in the back. Me? You're the 
ready to spend some time with someone who does. Like you. I know you don't know me very well yet, but I'm just asking for a chance. Okay, I'll think about it. Thank you, Blanche. You're welcome, Swin. Mr. Bud? Yes. You probably don't remember me, but uh, you told me I wasn't sick. Do you remember? You told me I was just getting old. I'm sorry, I really don't remember. Maybe you're getting old. <laughs> That's a little... I'm have 49 more of them. You're rich! Uh -huh. You're half right. <laughs> You just paid fifty dollars for those. You should split them. Split them? Are you kidding? Don't be crazy. I paid for these fair and square. You said yourself all deals are final. Charlie would want me to have them. George. I'd go out with a grandmother. I don't want to go out with someone I can't trust. Goodbye, Blanche. Wait. That's that. No use crying. Shall we take the baby to the park? Why? So you can pick someone else up? Am I interrupting? I sincerely hope so. <laughs> Blanche, I thought you had a date. Oh, I canceled. He was just a nice man with a big boat who wanted to go to Bimini. <laughs> that sounds like hell. I don't know. I'm just not ready to start up something with someone new. I think it's because you miss Stephen. Oh, you little pirates. All right. You got it. Now get out of here. Thank you, Blanche. I'll beat it. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Don't worry, that check was written on our vacation account that we closed last week. <laughs> Shut up and hold my hand. What? Hold my hand. Now look in my eyes. Look deep into my eyes. Look like you want to kiss me. Okay, move your lips around. Now go like this. Uh, Blanche, I don't count okay, really... Okay, get ready to kiss me. Blanche. Get set. Blanche. Go. Think... <laughs> Blanche, is, is that you? Have you got a letter? She never sent it. She forgets. I don't forget anything. Hi, Angela. Hi, Blanche. No, honey, I'm Blanche. Doesn't that make it confusing, having two Blanches in the same house? <laughs> and Angela, honey, wouldn't you like to lie down? You've had a long trip. I don't want to lie down. I just got here. Oh, I always get tired after a long Condescending. Trip. I know it's silly, but it's doctor's orders. It's just a tool to help me get over Dorothy. Can I hold him? Are your hands clean? Hello, Stan. Uh, Gloria, what are you doing here? You usually don't like to slum it with this part of the family. Stan, please. She's out of M-O-N-E-Y. From a funeral? No, Rose. We were singing backup for Johnny Cash. <laughs> of course we were at a funeral. Who died? My best friend, Edith Flannery. I thought Mildred Feinberg was your best friend. She was, but we've grown apart. I think her death had something to do with it. How do you break off a relationship oh. when the sex is great? When the sex is lousy, it's easy. <laughs> Two more dates and it's over. You know, just to make sure. I remember the best sex of my whole life. Oh. Was it difficult? Ed. What? A coroner's investigation proved that Moran staged the whole thing. He's alive? And he knows that Miles is seeing Rose, and Rose knows me, and they always hold the prettiest one hostage. <laughs> oh, if I could just do something to make myself less attractive. Just to make sure that you, you don't settle into old age. So you're saying you make me vacuum and dust and scrape crusty stuff off the tile because you love me? <laughs> Honestly, it tickles me. Pussycat! Oh, my mom! I, I, I feel so ashamed. Everything you said about me is true. I'm, I'm a loser. You're not a loser. You just need some help. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> Mrs. Nyland, I think a lot of... One thing out. While I was giving Sonny the evil eye, I noticed he was kind of cute. So... I decided to work in a little kiss of death, too. <laughs> well, that livened him up, and we spent a very pleasant afternoon. Oh. 
Ma, you are incredible. <laughs> Those were Sonny's words. They laugh, they sing, they slam down a few boilermakers. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, he's arrested for showing her how he can hold his palate without using his hands. <laughs> I digress. Keep finding a waterfall. If you don't find anything in an hour, head back for the coastline, follow it around, and look for our fire. Now move. I said move! <laughs> Daughter, should we be listening to Rose? Quiet. I don't think we're allowed to talk while we work. <laughs> Movements. Eine kleine Nacht music. <laughs> That's right. How did you know that? Well, they always play it during the chases on the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. <laughs> there, was, there was this one where... Hello. No, no, we don't have a car for sale. No, you must have the wrong number. Is it a man or a woman? No, it's a woman interested in a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. I was sorry, the car's been sold. Oh. <laughs> What is this all about? I have figured out the most wonderful way to meet men. Hello, Madge. That's Blanche. Oh, didn't I say that? This is my date, Norman. He's a student in my creative writing course. I didn't know you taught high school. <laughs> Norman and I are the same age, spiritually. Hey, listen, if you can get him to buy... Going to jail. I believe you, Counselor. I believe you. Just, just proceed. Thank Make you. Make it Honor. quick. Your Honor, uh, this may be my very last appearance before the bar. Would you uh, indulge? Oh well, somebody say I'm sorry before I burst. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. And if I have to die, I'm just glad I'm doing it with my two best friends. Oh, I love you, Blake. Oh, I love you, Rose. Oh, I love both of you. <laughs> oh, I'm just so full of love. The communion dress. I was there for you when you needed a prom dress. I was there for you when you needed a wedding dress. And frankly, I'm sick of it. Buy your own damn dress. <laughs> Mildred's. Rose Nyland? Well, what if I start acting like her poor you about the same thing? I'm not going. Why? Don't faint, but you were right when you said I should go out and make new friends. So, uh, I took your advice. I met some nice people at the center, and this weekend we're all going to Cancun. Looks like uh, you and what's-his-name will have to go to the Bahamas without me. You just met this? I was Mrs. Lucky and never knew it? <laughs> Uh, what about the uh, present, Mrs. Lucky? Does she know what a maggot you are? <laughs> magnet, Dorothy, magnet. <laughs> hey, Dad. I'll be with you in a second. Ma, could I see you in... But why did he always make promises to me that he never kept? Do you know how that affects a little girl? Like the time he promised me he was going to take me to his work and introduce me to his boss and show me around to all his friends? When he didn't, well, I just, I felt like there was something wrong with me, like, like he wasn't proud of me. <laughs> now, I meant that for $10,000, I might try my hand at lyric writing. I mean, maybe we could, uh, you know, team up. You mean music by Rose Nyland, lyrics by Dorothy's Bourne? Well, why not? I mean, we could be the next Rogers and Hammerstein, the next Simon and Garfield. Rose, do we have time to run out and get hit by a bus? <laughs> First, there'd be the Christmas pageant with the shepherds and the angels and the two wise men. There were three wise men, Rose. Not in St. Olaf. <laughs> then we'd all go down to the town square and try to form a circle. And then we'd stay. And both of them involved yanking a chain. <laughs> Has anybody seen Blanche? She had a date last night and this morning her bed's all made and she's not even there. <laughs> Wait a minute, here's our walking playground now. <laughs> Boy, it must be true love. This guy is slowing down to five miles. The Leitner. Cleo Leitner. I think I used that on my hair once. <laughs> Cleo was the cutest boy at our high school. He was also the only sophomore old enough to get into a bar. <laughs> so, 
What did you do when you got there? I sat in my father's truck for hours. And without Hare Krishna's asking for money. There were people everywhere, rushing off to catch trains, sitting on benches, browsing in the souvenir shop. The souvenir shop? Well, of course, Blanche. They were all buying T-shirts. You know, the ones that say, today is the first day of the end of your life. <laughs> but why did he always make promises to me that he never kept? Do you know how that affects a little girl? Like the time he promised me he was going to take me to his work and introduce me to his boss and show me around to all his friends. When he didn't, well, I just, I felt like there was something wrong with me. Like, like he wasn't proud of me. Cup of tea, Ma. Hmm? Good idea, pussycat. Ma, you never thought I wasn't your daughter, did you? Of course not. Because if you want to check the results Oh, of don't it. talk crazy. Go in and make the tea. I'll be right in. What have you got there? Nothing. Two very eccentric old ladies who used to bathe together and floss each other's teeth. <laughs> Picked him out one morning, and that very afternoon went down to the supermarket to advertise for new ones. That was when I first met Rose. Walls and this in my time. <laughs> when I see he is holding a machine gun, so I decide to take his advice. I move, rat a tat tat, everybody's falling like flies on your Aunt Regine. <laughs> You're letting your imagination run wild, Papa. This is Chicago, not Sicily. You're just a little... Think this is gonna work? I don't know. We should just go along with whatever she wants to do. The important thing is to keep Rose's mind occupied. Hey, give me some lipstick. <laughs> So, did I uh, mention that my daughter and her roommates are uh, just left on their vacation? They'll be gone for five days. Anyway, I noticed um, we're always smiling at each other. So I was thinking, now that we have a little privacy, maybe sometime we could smile and talk, you know, over, uh, over a glass of... I tell you, that Disney World Hotel was just wonderful. It had everything. Good service, delicious food, a beautiful room. What did you think of the rides? They got rides? Don't worry about it. You had a good time and you never had a stand in line. We like to stay in chat, but we want to get settled in our new place. I did to pull them off the chicken, so I put an end to that. Ma, listen, next time you have an urge to stroll down memory lane, do me a favor. Go by yourself. <laughs> what time were we supposed to be at the studio, Sophia? I don't know. I have to check the tickets. Hand me my purse, Dorothy. <laughs> Girls, I just got a letter from my brother Clayton. He says he's coming for a visit next week and he has a big surprise. Oh, oh that's wonderful. I don't know what the surprise is, too. Clayton's met himself a girl he wants me to meet up. Honey, your brother is gay. <laughs> Dorothy, I think that gay thing was just a phase he was... time since I've taken you to the movies, hasn't it? <laughs> Bunch. This guy has gone past being a challenge. He is really treating you very badly. Oh, Dorothy, you'll see. I'm just reeling him in. Blanche, look, I usually don't talk to you about the menu date. Nor do I talk to you about the menu date. Oh, <laughs> listen to me. I made a joke. <laughs> you know what? Bye, Dorothy. Blanche, exactly what did you say to Lucy that night at Ed's apartment? Oh, I, I told her a lot of things. I told her she was a bright, charming, funny young lady who didn't have to rely upon sex to be liked. Well, good for you, Blanche. You know, I hadn't realized how much she's been looking up to me. I, I dress her. Who's back? O.J. Simpson Rose. <laughs> the rat is back. He's not a rat, he's a mouse. He is history. I'm calling the exterminator. Oh, no, Dorothy, don't do that. I'll talk to him. But you'll talk to the exterminator? No, the mouse. <laughs> I can communicate with animals. The time. Ma Rose isn't talking to me. Enjoy it while it lasts. Now, good night. <laughs> Honey. 
Oh, hi, Dorothy. Honey, can I talk to you? No, go away. But I can't sleep, Sophia, and it's all because Rose isn't talking to me. I could care less. Now get out of my room. <laughs> Sophia? I'm not in. All right. Well, you ought to be. What about Dorothy? She happens to be my friend. There's no reason to bring Dorothy into this. Hmm. Hi, Elliot. Well, hello, Rose. <laughs> my, what is that marvelous scent you're wearing? Fancy albacore tuna. <laughs> I made a casserole for dinner. Would you certainly... Might consider a joint therapy session. Therapy's a wonderful idea. Oh, I remember St. Olaf's most famous psychotherapist. The Freud brothers. Sigmund and Roy. You may have read their bestseller. If I have all the cheese I want... Why does she keep crying like that? Oh, she probably just misses her mother. Needs to hear a feminine voice. And what was I doing? My Ben Gazzara impersonation? <laughs> Let Blanche try it. You and I aren't having any luck. Me? Oh, heavens no. I don't know anything about that. No, I can't. It was our pleasure, Jamie. See y'all. <laughs> well, Blanche, I love the girls, but they don't seem as old as you said. It's the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Charming man. And so handsome. Huh? Oh, as they say in St. Oh, Trudy, you did a very cruel thing. Yeah. Okay, okay, if I went too far, I'm sorry. Well, maybe you ought to apologize to Dorothy. She's back in her bed. Uh, Dorothy, are you all right? Cold is bad. A recurring dream. Night after night, I had this awful dream that I was trapped in an enclosed space full of men. <laughs> Now, what could that mean? <laughs> Let's give this a second. Now, wait a minute. There's more to it. Start a fire with rocks to still seawater into drinking water. Now, if you want to get out of this alive, I suggest you listen to me. Do I hear any objections? I didn't think so. <laughs> so, he Blanche, start breaking up the boat. We need wood for a fire. And you three, head up north, up that ridge. Based on those rock formations, there's a good chance of... I am never shopping at Fiedler Brothers again. I beg your pardon. Well, it's a little late for that. I've never been so humiliated in my life. What about the time you lost the key to your handcuffs and had to go with that guy on his mail route? <laughs> I guess you two are in the same boat. <laughs> I'm in the yacht. <laughs> What's this boat she keeps talking about? Don't worry, Rose. You missed it. Guarantee to make me gain back that pound. Ma, all this eating you're doing is ridiculous. Now, I am sure you are already back up to 99 pounds. We'll see. Wrong again, Creskin. Still 98. 98 pounds. I can't remember the last time I weighed 98. Proud do you mean? Would you... Seriously consider selling the house? Well, no. I mean, I don't think so. Uh, you have to admit this is an awful lot of money. Frankly, more than I think the house is worth. And as your agent, 3% of it is mine. What do you say, Blanche? Do we close the deal? <laughs> I have a terrific idea. Before we go home to spend Christmas with our families, why don't we have a little celebration right here? St. Olaf style. No, I will not drink eggnog while wearing a cast iron brassiere. <laughs> we don't do that at Christmas. We do that at Easter. <laughs> the government had to put me in the witness protection program. Gave me a new name, new job, whole new identity. I don't know what to say. I can't believe this story you're telling me. But you can believe the story about Henrik Felderstoll, St. Olaf's half-man, half-grasshopper? <laughs> Do a total fool of myself in front of the press. I'm the laughing stock of the entire country. What am I going to tell my mother? Your mother's from St. Olaf. She'll understand. <laughs> I'm just stupid. I'm a dim-witted dumb, simple-minded, grade-A Minnesota chucklehead. I'm gonna die. Ma, the doctor says you're healthy as a horse. 
Well, actually, the doctor in our prepaid health plan says you're healthy as a camel. <laughs> I assume in his country, it's the same as a horse. You know, Dorothy, for an extra $5, we can get a doctor who sees patients one at a time. Just relax. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Oh, your hands all right. Please, they're fine. He never threw a punch. Oh, oh that's, that's all behind you. Now, Peppy, this is the moment you wanted. Good luck. Before... Ma! Oh, quit complaining. There are worse things that can happen to you on Valentine's Day. I know. Was there ever a Valentine's Day when you didn't have a date? Please. Until I was 80, I was combing geezers out of my blue rinse. <laughs> I'm talking about something that happened a long time ago. My Sal and I were driving my father cross country to a wedding when we had some car trouble. <laughs> Die, Dorothy. Oh, Rose, please. I don't even know why fools fall in love. <laughs> Ma. What? That noise. What noise? The noise you're making with your nose and throat. I got a post-nasal drip. What would you like me to do? Drown and fly? He's not like that. He's very special. He's not the type of man who wants to hop into bed after just one date. And this is one of his attributes? Yes. I love it. In fact, I think I love him. Oh, honey. Rose, that's wonderful. But I... Oh, it must be at least 103, and the mall was impossible. Did you get something for the grandchildren? Oh, please. You know, Robbie wants a Batman hat. I went to six different stores. They were all sold out. I finally went to one store where they had one hat left, and another woman saw it. Oh, I can't... Come on, Dorothy, we're starting. He kissed me. He gave me flowers. Dorothy, come on. It's almost time. Over here, honey. Please. Counting me was actually a social disease. <laughs> Congratulations, Rose. A new record. And you've done it without needing penicillin. <laughs> now, Rose knows I don't mean anything, don't you, honey? We all have our dry spells. You can borrow the earrings, Blanche. I'm not going anywhere tonight. In fact, why don't you just hang on? What's he in here? <laughs> Charlie never wants. Rose. Frank and Dorothy might want to play footsie. Oh. Oh. How do I look? Beautiful. Go back and change. Oh, honey, that outfit might be all right for a gay funeral in New Orleans, but it's... Our research shows the Japanese actually hate rice. But what they hate more is burning their fingers on baked potatoes. Anyway, Dorothy, a major Japanese distributor is arriving next week. Sbornko is throwing a big reception for him. I need a date. I want you to go with me. I'm sorry, Stan. There are other vegetables I'd rather... You know, Dorothy, I think we're missing a whole box of slides. They must be in the suitcase, in the closet. No, I'll take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, where are you going? I can't stand it anymore. Your life is supposed to flash before your eyes. Oh, wait a minute. I can't take credit for those things. Rose, please. Gentlemen, you're embarrassing her. I mean, the woman is a saint, and she's far too modest to, to take credit for any of her good deeds. So what do you say? Do we have a winner here or not? Because he was such a strict disciplinarian? No, because now I'd be a wealthy widow with my own place in Pebble Beach, so I wouldn't have to listen to that crap. <laughs> Bless Ida Perkins every time he sat down to eat a baked potato. Oh, oh. <laughs> when did you leave the home, Mrs. Perkins? Oh, maybe a year now. Uh, I don't really keep track. So what made you decide to leave? Decide? Some things in life you never get to decide. 
Some things just happen. Gorgeous! <laughs> Let's give us both a big hand! Girls, girls, I am so sorry. Oh, so am I. Okay, first I start to yawn a little. <gasps> then I put my hands up over my head like Oh, this. Blanche, I know that one. You end up with your arm around me. Yeah, but that's just the first part. Did you know that if you blow right on the tip of a man's earlobe... <laughs> We're from when people stayed together because they had no choice. <laughs> Ma, would I be insisting on this checkup if I didn't care about you? Why can't we just do each other's hair like Blanche and her daughter? <laughs> oh, look, Ma, I know you're scared. I'll go with you. Look, when I was little, then... Young man, this woman is doing you a favor. She's taking time from her own busy schedule. They don't know you have no life. <laughs> Kevin, no dice. You take it or leave it. These are my terms. Look, Coach, you told me if I was nice to her, she'd roll over. I'm out of here. If you want to win tomorrow, it's... <laughs> Give us a few minutes, please. Five minutes more, then I've got to bury Mr. Pincus. Oh. You see? Is there a Blanche Hollingsworth here? God, he's been killed. Arrested. What? He gave me this to give to you. He's a bigamist, ma'am. He's wanted in four states. He's got six wives. Yes, Blanche. Oh, I just wanted to hear it out loud before I had another bowl of ice cream. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's go out to dinner and celebrate Valentine's Day ourselves. Just because we don't have dates doesn't mean we can't have a good time. It doesn't. Who's this right? I mean, this is hardly a disaster. We're not the only women in the world. <laughs> want to date girls in their 20s and 30s. What's a great looking gal in her 40s to do? Perhaps we should find one and ask her. <laughs> oh, come on, Blanche. This is all your own fault. I mean, take Stephen. You'd been dating him for six weeks. The moment it looked like you were making some sort of... A hand puppet, Rose. <laughs> Honey, I am so sorry. I knew you shouldn't have gone to Columbia University. It's in New York City, for heaven's sake. A subway runs right through it. You want to go to college where there are green lawns and willow trees and young men. In uh, I'm sorry for crying. Me too. <laughs> But how can you thank someone who's taken you from crayons to perfume? Maybe some other time, Blanche. <laughs> that does. I will not let you humiliate me any longer. You may not want me ham lush bow, but I can promise you somewhere on this planet I will damn sure find some man who does. Ooh. <laughs> Rose, why don't they just carry 13 in each hand? Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. We care about each other. We can lick any problem, big or small. What's going on? Oh, Rose has decided to keep on seeing Jonathan. Fine. <laughs> We're all adults here. Let the man out of the pillowcase. We don't mind if he sleeps on. Em. Oh, how do you do? I'm Dorothy's Bornack. And this is my mother, Sophia Petrillo. And these are my friends, Rose and Blanche. We're competing on today's show. <laughs> well, hello, Tiffany. It is such a pleasure to meet you, honey. I want you to know that I thought those pictures of you in that sleazy, girly magazine were so tastefully... Cup of tea, hmm? Good idea, pussycat. Ma, you never thought I wasn't your daughter, did you? Of course not. Because if you want to check the results Oh, of don't it... talk crazy. Go in and make the tea. I'll be right in. What have you got there? Nothing. But then who wouldn't? He's, he's sensitive. He's caring. 
and he thinks I'm neater than hard salami. <laughs> Did he actually tell you that? Really? I shouldn't have repeated it. It was said in a moment of powder. You're not her family. Why does everybody keep saying that? We share our lives together. You share a house together. Uh, Kirsten Adams? Yes? Dr. I'm Dr. Shrewsbury. H how's my mother? Is she going to be okay? Your mother has to have a triple bypass. Dream. I mean, what's the big deal? Now, come on, Dr. You've come this far. You might as well go through with it. Yeah, but what if nobody laughs? Then you'll know how Lisa Bonet feels. <laughs> okay, okay. Who's got number 14? God, I do. Okay, sweetie, you're on next. Uh, so, hey, I got an idea. You know, I'm, I'm feeling a little frisky. That, did you ever make love in the out of doors? Miles, no! Well, just once. Charlie and I went to St. Olaf's most romantic outdoor trysting place. Flying vicious toad of a mother. Is there a problem? Oh, not at all. Happy as ever at Happiness House. <laughs> Aww. Well, I guess we should be going. Oh, not before I get a picture. Oh, Rose. Oh, come on, Dorothy. It's your prom picture. Uh. <laughs> Say cheese. Uh. The right man could be just around the corner. Well, and he may not be. I may turn around a dozen corners and not find anyone. So, instead of trying, you're just going to give up and do this crazy baby thing. Crazy baby thing? What I am doing, Mother, is taking control of my life and have... The table. Oh, let me do it. Oh, no, oh, wait, wait, Lily. Now, Rose, I'm fine. No, I'm just going to get your cane. No, I don't need that. Last night, I memorized the layout for the whole house. Now, please stop treating me as if I'm totally helpless. I'm sorry. You know how I am. I, I just, I'm overprotective. <laughs> Go and find a digits to the garden, and I say, what do you think you're doing? She says... She thought Cuneo, the bookmaker, was in the Santa suit. And I say, that's a lie. Well, we have a big fight about it. She denies the whole thing, and we never speak again. Oh, Aunt well, Angela, come on. That was 30 years ago. Don't you think you should talk to me? <laughs> Make way for the victors. You won the big game. No, Rose, we lost, and we all changed our names to Victor. <laughs> Everyone. Now it's time for ice cream. Yeah! Are you good going, guys? You're the only one who can help me. After you've had some time, maybe I could call you? I'm sorry about all this. Really. I don't want believe it. It's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> I've even change? told that. It's never stopped her before. You know, it good. She tells it as fact. <laughs> you see why we never had to write? I'll see you tomorrow, Blanche. Yeah. Boy, this is really beginning to chafe. I Were you able to get him to bed? No. Rose still in the closet with the camera? Yes. Maybe you'll get him tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. No, Rose, please. Well, why don't you just say something so I can become hysterical, eat a box of Malamars and get it over with? <laughs> okay. Uh, Jason called. You got a part in Macbeth, but I'm afraid it isn't the part you were hoping for. What part did I get? Hold up. Time for Dreyfus to go home. Now, see, that wasn't so bad, was it, Doctor? No, you're right. You know, actually, he was very little trouble. Yeah, no trouble at all. <laughs> now, come on, Dreyfus, let's go. <laughs> Yo, Dreyfus, it's checkout time. <laughs> Self-portrait, so interesting. You're here. Yes. <laughs> Gee, out of three noses, why did you keep the biggest? <laughs> All the galleries make the same mistake. They've hung it upside down. Oh, then those aren't noses. 
Well, if you're as friendly as your skies are, I'd sure love to get together sometime. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> I have a flight to Atlanta first thing tomorrow morning. Blanche, honey, are you sure that you... <laughs> Which sister is this, Rose? My younger sister, Holly. Frankly, I'm not too happy about it. This is a terrible thing to say, but I don't really like her. <laughs> we haven't gotten along since we were kids. <laughs> Do you really think that's all it is? Of course. Well, maybe you're unable to provide for his family and not much fun under the old yak skin. The women would leave him out in the snow to die. <laughs> Tough village. Stanley, I just spoke to Dr. Deutsch and he says there's nothing to worry about. Some patients do experience a sudden setback like this just when they're recovering. What, the grocery store did it? <laughs> That's not a secret. I just forgot to mention it. I think she means more like the time she told me that she went skilly dipping with your cousin Lars before he gave up the pulpit back in St. Gustave. He decided to buy a woman from the Philippines. Actually, he bought two women. He wanted an extra for formal occasions. Then who is this guy? Well, to tell you the truth, I was on the bus. Wait a minute. You set Dorothy up with some guy you met on a bus? Please, it wasn't that glamorous. <laughs> that letter to Rose. You what? <laughs> I wrote that letter myself. I made up a name and I answered Rose's ad. <laughs> Blanche, how could you? She thinks someone took an interest in her. Well, someone did, me. But what if she expects another letter from this guy? What if she decides... Oh, sweetie, bye, Janet. How was the trip? Fine, oh, fine. You come fine. and sit down next to Grandma. Oh, give me a hug. Oh, you too. He's so beautiful. He's so sweet. Can we go to Monkey Village, Grandma? Yes, darling. Don't do this to me. You're my two best friends. How do we know you're telling the truth about that? Well, I guess you don't. I'm just like her. You have one at home, too? One at home? What, am I a cock spaniel? <laughs> Why don't you just give me an old sock to chew on? <laughs> you know, I'm glad you showed up. There's something important we didn't discuss this afternoon, and I'd like to get that cleared up before we talk about anything else. What is it? I'm glad. You know, we've been so worried about you. Well, I guess you can cry just so long and eat just so much. <laughs> then you have to pull yourself together and get on with your life. Mm -hmm. Besides, there'll be other Richards. Of course, they won't be as charming or as handsome or as rich. I better stop. I'm starting to depress myself again. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, look! I think I could start the car with this thing. Ma, my mind is made up. Whatever makes you happy, pussycat. Oh, thanks, Ma. And I'm sorry, honey, but you're going to have to send back the TV. Not if I could pay for it myself. Oh? Now, how do you propose to do that? Checked it out when I noticed him giving me the eye. <laughs> Blanche, have you ever met a man you didn't think was giving you the eye? Once in 1976, but it was only two days later that Mr. President Jimmy Carter announced to the American people that he had secretly lusted in his heart. Psychiatrist, <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> the woman gives names to her gingerbread men. <laughs> I'm ready to go to the airport. Oh, I'm going that way, Sophia. I can take you. Oh, thanks, Rose. Fine. Wait a minute. You can't run out of here. We want to hear more about this doctor of yours. Oh, well, there's not... Always the same thing with you, Blanche. <laughs> sex, sex, sex. I am tired of hearing it. Maybe that's because you're not getting any, Dorothy. <laughs> you want the pot again, Rose? <laughs> well, 
Well, it just so happens. How much is a new roof going to cost, Sid? Ten thousand. Well, how much is a patch job? Uh, a couple of hundred. Look, hey, can I use your phone? I gotta make an important call. Yeah, here. go ahead. We have to discuss this. Yeah. Dorothy, we don't have ten thousand. It wasn't my fault. We were backing down the driveway, and Sophia told me I ran over Mrs. Stouffer. <laughs> And you believed her? Well, I had to check. Last week, I did pin her and her walker to the fence on a wide right turn. I'll get my shopping list. I have your shopping list. Good, and everyone is happy, Blanche. When you come back from a walk along the beach, you spend an hour shaking the sand out of your underalls. Just exactly what do you mean by that? I mean that Blanche Devereaux does not stay out all night with a man just to go walking along the beach. Well, never before, that's true, but as Beauregard Jefferson kindly pointed out on my 16th birthday, there's a first time for everything. I'll change. <laughs> oh, come on, I'll help you pick out something. There's nothing left to pick. The only thing I haven't tried on is the bedspread. <laughs> oh, hello, Elliot. Come in. Hello, Blanche. Dorothy, ready? Oh, I'm afraid she's going to be a little... You're slouching. You're trying to pretend you're not tall. You do it all the time. I do not. Yes, you do. Ever since you changed schools in the fourth grade, the kids thought you were the substitute teacher. <laughs> well, girls, I did it. I finally broke down and bought that dress I've been eyeing for a month. Oh. Well, I thought you were going to wear the same silk one you wore to last year's banquet. Oh, no, I changed... Kendall? <laughs> Mama, that we could go down there, and once you see these places are legitimate, you won't be so upset. I don't want to go to a place like that. It's too embarrassing. What if one of the neighbors saw me going in? What would they think? There. Don't look at me. I haven't had a raw vegetable in six months. <laughs> That's Mr. Percy, our station manager. Well, the uh, secret's out. Our consumer reporter, Enrique Moss, has announced that he's leaving the show and moving on to the network. But we feel we found the perfect replacement. She's dramatic. It's better with men. Oh, come on, that's false security. No, it's not. I was safer with Charles. I was never once robbed or murdered when I was with Charles. <laughs> Look, you could just as easily have been murdered living with Charles. I'm surprised she wasn't... <laughs> Aren't you going to get mad? No. You want to play another hand? Nah, if you don't get mad, you take the fun out of it. <laughs> you still have to... Then you took them. I mean, deceit, then theft. Isn't murder the next logical step? St. Olaf, right? <laughs> Face it, Dorothy. Blanche was discovered in a locked room. Only she and the victim had keys. I mean, give me another explanation. The trouble is, in exchange, student... <laughs> Kim Fong Toy. Oh, oh, sure. You look different. Different on outside, same on inside. Hi, I, I'm Pete Fielder. Senior class president. Oh, my God, it's the president! Rose. I'm going to try something. Hey, Jacques. Give me a hand and watch where you put it. <laughs> Good night, and, and thank you for a wonderful evening. Rose, what is going on? Now, something is wrong. I don't know what you mean. Well, it's obvious you're trying to avoid any kind of intimacy. I mean, like that place you dragged me to tonight. I... Look, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the evening of lesbian poetry. Nightmares, you know, monsters in the closet, and he'd always let me sleep in your room. You remember, Ma? And I remember how you and Pop would get me to stop crying. You'd put your arms around me and kiss me and say, as long as you're in my arms, everything's going to be okay. Two kinds of people. One is an industrious, hard-working, give 100%, pain in the butt to everybody else, go-getter. I am not one of those people. <laughs> Gee, I wish I felt better about this. Well, I wish you did too. 
You didn't have to do that. I hope you like it. It's very popular in Minnesota. It's a maple syrup, honey, brown sugar, molasses, rice, crispy law. <laughs> One for each of you. How sweet. How incredibly sweet. Oh, come on now, we've got to get you two sick. Your daughter is about to leave for the airport. What the hell are you doing out here? Oh, well, there's still some sun. I thought I might get a little color. Blanche, this has to be absolutely the dumbest thing you could... Ma and Rose. Oh, I know. It's just a terrible thing to do, and I just feel awful even thinking about it. But Dorothy, let's face it. If we team up with Fred and Willard, we stand a much better chance of winning. Blanche, I am shocked that you would even suggest such a thing. Dorothy, your mother and Rose are dead weight. <laughs> Let us cut them loose before they drag us down. Incidentally, is Walter renting that blue tuxedo again? Walter never rented a blue tuxedo, and you know it. He owns that blue tuxedo. <laughs> Girls, did Jake call? He is half an hour late. No, Blanche. Is Jake going to be able to take you to the banquet, or will he have to work? She's not out there. She isn't in her bedroom. There's no one in the kitchen now, but I think she was there. The coffee's still warm. Oh, Ma, that's because we were in there drinking it less than an hour ago. Excuse me, Miss Marple. I'm new at this. <laughs> Blanche, where have you been? Blanche, why didn't you call us? You had us worried. Ma, how did you know? Because you had the same look of panic on your face when you got pregnant. <laughs> kind of like a deer caught in the headlights of a car. <laughs> I thought only pregnant teenagers had that expression until I saw Dan Quayle on TV. And reason being, you don't pay any. I told you she'd throw it in our face. And speaking of complaints, what about that out-of-control housewarming party that kept all the other tenants awake until dawn? The one I was not invited to? That wasn't a party, that was a quiet dinner for two. Hi there, Anne. Guys, our relationship for this I guess it's possible you were attracted to Stan. I mean, Lord knows I stayed with him for 38 years, but I think this time you could have resisted just in case it might have made a difference to me. And I think the thing that hurts me most of all... One you. Please, look at his nose. Of course he's Italian. <laughs> confused about the operation guilt watching while two naked men wrestle to see who gets to make love to me <laughs> it's the end of the world only for the loser okay Rose what is this all about you know that sunshine cadet troop I've been helping out with this was done by one of the girls she calls it uh huh yeah right Six o'clock at Mildred's. We're putting together a list of demands to present to that scuzzball in the crack and at work tomorrow. Good. Oh, and Edna, bring some sherry. Nobody bought that glaucoma story when you whipped out that reefer last... Evero doing laundry for a man? Not just any man. Rex Huntington. Oh. Rex Huntington? Isn't he the guy who stood you up last week? Well, yeah, he did, but I happen to like the man, so I'm giving him a second chance. That was his second chance. He stood you up the week before that. You're enjoying this, aren't you, darling? <laughs> Blanche, would you mind coming over and actually doing something? Well, Dorothy's born, are you implying I'm not pulling my way? That's between you and the laws of physics. <laughs> Come on, honey, these are your father's things. You should be helping. The auction's less than a week away. There's a lot to do. It's just so hard for... Look, uh, Dorothy, can I ask you a personal question? Yes. You're divorced? Yes. How's your um, social life? Do you, um, do you see men? <laughs> what in the world does seeing men have to do with anything? Oh, Dorothy, we know for a fact that if people are not happy, and lonely people aren't, oh. but they get all kinds of oh, symptoms... Show you what we have in common. <laughs> Sophia, for God's sake, speak up. Don't let her run off with the first man, and I do mean the first, that comes along. All right, all right. 
Now listen, Johnny Red. <laughs> Been locked up for about three years. They have all this pent up sexual energy. Everybody's all pumped up because all you ever do in prison is lift weights. So we'll get all those muscle guys with homemade tattoos. What are you looking at? You did a good job, ladies. Morning, Blanche. Morning, Ma. You sleep well? No. I have that recurring nightmare. You know, the one where I'm in bed with Warren Beatty, and he says, sorry, this is too sick even for me. <laughs> Do we have the ingredients for Kerflugenbergen? <laughs> Come on, Rose. Get a relationship that has very special problems, and uh, only you and Jonathan can decide whether those problems are worth working out. I can appreciate what you're going through, Rose. I once went through a very similar situation myself. You once dated a little person? Oh, no, 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 no. No, what I was referring to... Discoloration of the whites of her eyes. Try this and tell me you're not in heaven. <laughs> Sophia, I can't, really. One bite, for God's sake. Isn't it a little rude for him to be eating while she's having a heart attack? <laughs> she's not having a heart attack. Mm hmm. That's good. Understand. Yes, I do. I, I did a very stupid thing, and it can't be undone. But I'm going to do everything I can to make it up to Kate. I, I love her. A and, and I promise you that nothing like this will ever happen again. Good. Good. Because if it does, I will break every bone in your hand. You're going. We might miss the aliens. That would be fine with me. Dorothy, why are you talking that way? I think it's wonderful that there are other beings out there trying to meet us. They might have solutions to all our problems, cures for our diseases, new storylines for Al... Me crazy. Oh, I know. Me too. What do you say we go away, just the two of us for a few days? I say yes. How about we go to the Bahamas? All right! <laughs> I never understood why people throw rice at weddings anyway. Because tomatoes leave stains. <laughs> Could I talk to you two ladies in the living room, please? I have some... With this heat wave we're having, he's got them stacked up like firewood in all four locations. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hi. Is she here yet? Who, Rose? My sister. I left you a note on your bathroom mirror. Why did you leave a note on my bathroom mirror? Because it was the only one that had enough steam. <laughs> it's fabulous news, too. <gasps> oh, sure, sure. I'll be happy to tell her. Oh. Blanche, you flunked. <laughs> started learning a few things, I realized that the effort is worth it. Oh, I still have a long way to go, but Becky and I are doing okay. Oh, I feel so silly. I came out here to talk some sense into you, and you didn't even need me. Oh, yes, I did, Rose. I needed you to see that you were right. <laughs> Twice in two days? Danny shows up with that girl today. Whew, how old could she have been? Not very. Mm. <laughs> You're not like most women, Blanche, I'll tell you that. What do you mean? Well, wouldn't most women let a thing like this make them feel old? Yes. And well, all about your silly concert. Oh, Blanche, I'm sorry. What can we do for you? Nothing. I've decided I have to do it myself. Since the dean was no help whatever, I've decided the only one who can help me is me. Oh, I'm going to show that Professor Cooper something. Now, if you will excuse me, ladies, I have some tall studying to do. Only first, I think, as a reward for working... How's the studying going? Oh, I still have a lot to cover. I'm going to be up for quite a while. Okay, I'll just keep you company. No, I don't want any company. Just pretend I'm not here. <laughs> oh, goody, a slumber party. Mind if I join you? What is the matter with you two? What makes you think something's the matter? I was vital and happy. Now she's here, and yes, she's resting, but she's behaving like those people at Cypress Grove, camping in front of the TV all day. Poor woman. Uh, 
Do you know what I think the worst part of getting older is? Your face, Rose's hands. <laughs> incredible how did you know i heard him singing in the shower he's the only man i ever knew who knows all the words to send in the clowns <laughs> Rose, I owe you an apology. You sure do. Person, you always find something wrong with mine, so yours looks better. I didn't say anything. But let's face it, those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. <laughs> Look at the ducky wrapping paper. <laughs> and the little stick on bow. Did you... <laughs> That was the best meal I've ever had in my life. Well, how good could it have been? You left half of it. I ate every bite. For a minute, Rose, do you know what we need? An Elvis impersonator. <laughs> that sounds great, Blanche. I thought we'd get a new dishwasher first, but this could probably come in just as handy. I mean for our next club meeting, Rose. Membership has been waning. Maybe this... The ocean. Oh, gosh, I haven't frolicked since... Ah, well, since, since the day I dropped my mother off at Shady Pines. <laughs> Coincidentally, that was the last time I did a cartwheel. <laughs> it was a good day. Of course we could. Dorothy! <laughs> you can come in now. I thought the two of you would like some nice, cool lemonade. Marvin is married to Sarah. You don't get any lemonade. <laughs> Margaret Weinstein did the same thing when they changed her medication. <laughs> Do you think she could take Dorothy's place in the recital? Oh, come on. <laughs> Honey, I'll be fine by next week. Maybe you should have it checked by a doctor. Oh, come on. It's a very simple thing that comes and goes. I've had it for years. I mean, it's... Place his. His dog lifted his leg on an electric fence. <laughs> Poor Sparky. <laughs> to show him how oh, sorry I am, I'm going to go to the pound and get him another pet. Uh, Rose, I really think... <laughs> Oh, my God.